Hi guys, this is Shayna from yumiyarns.com and I'm here with our fourth tutorial in sock making. These are for the cuff down socks with a heel flap and gusset and today we are going to start our heel flap. So we've already finished our cast on, our cuff, and our leg. If you need those tutorials I'll have links below for you. Um, I'm using Suburban Stitcher yarn in the clean slate colorway. And Diane was nice enough to send that up so that we could do the tutorials. Um, and she's also our featured dyer for the Indie Sock Along, which uh, if you don't know what that is, I've again got links below, but basically it's $2 to sign up. You get 12 sock patterns, um, one each month, and it's a celebration of Indie dyers and fun sock patterns that come out each month. And that's available at yumiyarns.com and on Ravelry. So today we're going to start off with our um, heel flap. And I'm working a sock that is intended for me. So I want to make sure that my leg is the right length. When you're measuring, you're going to measure from the cast on edge all the way across to where your needles are in the project now. So I'm gonna move that away. So I've got my tape measure. And there we go, seven and a half from the cast on edge to where the needles are. And that's what, about 19 centimeters? Yep. So we are ready for our heel flap. So I'm working a 64 stitch sock. And the first thing I'm going to do is knit across the first half of all the stitches. So uh, those are going to turn into our instep stitches. And those ones, while we're working the heel flap, they're basically just going to be on hold for a little bit here while we work on building that heel flap. Because essentially the heel flap is just a little flap, so a square of yarn or of a fabric that we're going to make. Uh, and one of the benefits of doing the heel flap is that it's a little bit more sturdy because it has a lot of slip stitches, so the fabric's a bit more dense. So if you tend to wear out the backs of your heels in your socks or if they rub on your shoes or whatever, um, a sock with a heel flap might be a good way for you to make your socks. Uh, you can also customize it a little bit easier for making um, it a taller or shorter heel flap, uh, which will give you a deeper or a more narrow heel. Um, so if you have a higher or lower instep, that will help you out there. Okay, so we need to cross all those stitches. If you want, you can place a marker at either side to let you know that's where your halfway points are. Um, I'm still using the tail on mine as kind of my, this is the beginning of round marker. So I know these are my back half of my sock, so this is gonna be my heel. So with a heel flap, you are going to be making, like I said, a square of fabric, and we're going to put a selvage edge of slip stitches along the, along the side. That will help pick it up because once we have our heel flap, you're going to need to pick up those stitches to turn and make the foot actually a foot and not just another line down. <laughs> Um, and so when we're working the gusset, you need to pick up those stitches and it's a lot easier if you slip them. So what you do to slip a stitch, you just act like you're going to purl it, but don't actually purl it, just slip it off your needle and that stitch is done. That's how we slip a stitch. So to do the rest of it, we're going to do a slip one, knit one, all the way across all the stitches. So slip, knit. Slip, knit, slip, knit. And it can be tempting to slip your stitch knitwise, which means you do this and then you go in and knit. Um, but if you do that, it twists your stitch. So you will still get a tighter fabric, but it's probably going to be a lot tighter than you intend. Um, and will probably be a bit more like chain mail than you really want. So we are almost there. Um, 
And the reason we do this is just to create a smoother fabric or a more dense fabric um, that it will kind of have a little bit of a raised texture. So it'll look almost like a pretend um, ribbing, but it won't be stretchy like a ribbing because you're elongating every other stitch, which pulls it tighter and makes a tighter fabric. So you can kind of see it. Um, it'll, it'll become more pronounced the further you go. But now we are done with working our back half of stitches. So now we're actually going to turn it around and we're going to work on the wrong side of the fabric. So this will be the first time in your sock that you're um, working the sock the wrong way or from the wrong side. So we're going to purl the first stitch and I actually like having my yarn forward for this. Um, or not purl, you're gonna slip the first stitch, excuse me. And then bring your yarn back um, behind the needles. Nope, sorry. Uh, because we're working the wrong side, you're keeping the yarn in front. So to avoid confusion, I'm gonna start over. So we're going to bring it to the front Slip the first stitch, and now you're just gonna purl all the way across. Oops. All the stitches. Believe it or not, it's a lot more difficult to just do a normal purl while you're trying to not knock over a camera. <laughs> but we'll get there. I'm going to angle that a little bit differently so that I don't have... There you go. See if that helps a bit. Maybe you should have done less stitches on this sock. I was not thinking this through, but I thought you would probably want to see it on an actual human foot when I was done. So, we're almost there. And it will feel a little awkward the first little bit here while you're working on it, um, just because you had been knitting in the round and now you're not. So you're trying to make your knitting go a different direction from how you've been working it. <laughs> there we go. So we have them all purled. And we're going to turn the yarn or the sock around again. And Still can't really see. You can kind of see a little bit. That one was slipped. See how this one's popping forward a bit and that one's kind of going to the back? It'll become more prevalent as we go. Um, but then we're going to start the next row. And again, you're going to slip that first stitch. And then you're going to knit one. And you're going to slip one. And knit. Slip. And knit. And knit. And I'm not going to make you watch me do all of that again, but we're going to leave it here. I'll finish my heel flap. And if you're working um, the pattern and watching this at a later date, you can work your heel flap also. Um, we're going to do, like I said, since this is 32 stitches that I'm working across for the heel flap, I'm just going to do 32 rows deep. If you wanted it to be deeper, you could do like 36 rows and make it more of a rectangle. Um, if you wanted it a little bit more narrow, you could do 30 rows. Um, you really can just adjust it how you need uh, for a heel flap, which is kind of nice. Um, I tend to just like the standard square heel flap because um, that's what fits me. So that is what I'm going to do. 
So I'll get my 32 rows on my heel flap done and I'll be back in a little bit. We're gonna do the heel turn also in this lesson, um, but that's going to be a separate video just because I feel like it needs to be on its own um, so people can jump back to the spots that they need to have a bit more um, time with if needed. So with that, I will tell you guys goodbye and I'll be back later with the second video um, I hope you have a great day and have fun knitting your flaps.